Hello, I'm Colin Headley and I'm facilitator for the South Downs Farmers Group. The group's sort of like a, located in a core part of the South Downs with Old Winchester Hill on our western extent and then running eastwards past Butzer Hill, Chilton Down and then ending at Kingly Vale National Nature Reserve north of Chichester and we include farms with part of the uh, Upper Meon uh, and down the river ends towards Chichester Harbour. Currently we have around about 25 farmers who are joined but we're having new members join all the time and their combined farmed area is around 8,000 hectares or 20,000 acres. The group, because uh, it's a farmer-led group and the group have agreed some target wildlife species that we'd like to focus our efforts on and they are a barn owl, a lapwing or peewit, a grey partridge, a hare uh, and also insect-rich chalk grass and, and also insect-rich habitats that we can create on, on cultivated ground too. Early on in our um, uh, development of the group, we, we started to build a very good partnership with Ports of Water. Uh, and Ports of Water have found that um, it's very important to work with farmers to go above the already high level of good practice to improve water quality in local boreholes. I'm excited by the future for the South Downs Farmers Group. Uh, I think the key thing is that we, we know that climate change is going to put additional pressure on food production and on wildlife conservation and that's why partly why landscape scale delivery is so important and we also know that farming whether it's through government schemes or perhaps through private funding um, that a larger part of our income as farmers is going to come through the delivery of the environment and um, climate change mitigation we all of us are concerned about it um, but most of us can't do too much about delivering positive gain but farmers can through uh, delivering a range of sustainable farm practices help protect us all from the worst effects of climate change and that's an exciting it's a challenge but I know it's an opportunity that our group is up for and we're looking forward to seeing how we can work more closely with our community in the future. I think one of the frustrations of, of farmers and I, I have the pleasure of working with many farmers is that a lot of the good work they do uh, isn't sometimes obvious or um, appreciated or, or, or recognised and I think the, the beauty of the videos that we've produced in partnership with the National Park is to demonstrate not only what a fantastic area uh, we have the pleasure of living in but also just how much good work farmers are already doing for the environment for our benefit uh, and that there is also more that they are willing to do in the future and that's a really positive message when you're out walking, cycling or on horseback enjoying the wonderful place that is the South Downs National Park. Hello, I'm Stuart Reid and I'm a member of the South Downs Farmers Group. And we farm here north of Chichester um, in West Marden on the Watergate Estate. Predominantly we, we have crop production of milling wheat for bread, malting barley for beer and oilseed rape for oil production. Food production I see predominantly for, is, as my role in the, in the South Downs National Park. Um, the landscape has been created by food production and so it should continue but working very closely with the environment alongside that. The Watergate Estate has 500 acres of semi-ancient woodland. We manage it through a variety of techniques, uh, coppicing, thinning, uh, glade management, ride management, even deadwood um, management uh, to create the best habitat we can. This is a prime example of deer damage to a freshly coppiced uh, hazel stall. We've got zero regrowth um, on the hazel stall, very minor throwback compared to behind the fence there where we've got a two year coppice and it's probably two meters plus tall so that's the value of fencing and the amount of deer that we've got in this area. In the woodlands we do have a few ponds and very simple ponds we just scrape out some soil um, create a, a pond which again you've got a totally different wildlife habitat for various insects and animals. The challenges in the woodland at the moment is ash dieback which is a fungus which eventually kills the ash tree um, which we have to deal with because they become very brittle. We will leave a few for dead tree management where they're safe to do so and we will replant with native species of uh, trees 
Favourite part about being a farmer would be the variety of the jobs that we do, um, the extreme variety of the jobs. One minute it can be wildflowers look, tending to or looking after wildflowers, the next minute crop production and fixing a machine later on. Um, it's just a very varied work. My name is Andrew Fisk. I'm a member of the South Downs Farmers Cluster Group. Um, farm here at Hebbardens Farm. We've been here since 1960. The crops on the farm are milling wheat for your bread, malting barley for your beer, whiskey, and um, milling oats. I think you might find those in um, your breakfast. Um, beans, I'm sure they're probably... Actually, the beans will be for human consumption probably in Egypt and um, or there'll be cattle feed. We have bed and breakfast, cut flowers, um, new project and um, diversification and there's DIY livery for horses. We have 20 plus horses on the farm and I'm sitting on a bale of hay which is going to be the autumn feed. Bird life is is rich. The RSPB have um, done a few surveys on the farm and um, we have Good numbers of skylarks and yellow hammers. There are linnets. Um, I've got barn owls in my barns. Um, hopefully, we're going to have a good breeding season again this year. And um, my favourite bird in the farm is probably the wheat ear. It's only a passing through sort of bird, so I'm told. But to see the white rump in March and April is amazing. With the RSPB, um, we are trying to increase the numbers of turtle dubs on the farm. We're putting supplementary feed down for them. I'm going to try and get a, um, a dew pond or some sort of water on the farm to encourage them. They've been here all the time I can remember. If it was all flat we'd be growing acres and acres of wheat and or horticultural crops. We need to have grass on the farm, we need to have flowers, we need um, habitat for wildlife. Flowers in the margins, Phacelia would be a big one, this is a lovely purple flower, attracts bees and insects in great numbers. This field is called the park, the church behind me, um, dating Anglo-Saxon times and probably before. The field um, is wheat, um, milling wheat we were talking about earlier, and we have a wild meadow mix that was planted probably six years ago now. This valley is special. Um, water runs through the bottom um, of the valley winter times. It's like a winter born called the Lavents. Special feature of the area, crystal clear water coming out of the ground. My name is Simon Budden and I'm a member of the South Downs Farmers Group and uh, we've been farming here, my family been farming here in the South Downs since the 1920s and we farm here at Chalton. We farm mainly cereals and we grow malting barley, milling wheat, milling oats, oilseed rape and uh, winter barley. So this is a crop of uh, spring barley that we're growing here for other farmers so it's a seed crop of barley. This clump of barley would have grown from one, one seed, they're not quite developed yet. As you can see we have now got plenty of extra ears of barley so one seed can produce up to 140 plus seeds for us to sell to other farmers to plant and grow and it's the same for the oats over here as well. The benefits of belonging to the South Downs Farmers Group are we can coordinate all of our actions together and we can create corridors right the way across the landscape. We're really keen to conserve our lovely brown hairs, the barn owls, the lapwings, and the uh, species rich grass downland that is brilliant for, for all of the insects and bees and things. My favorite part of being a farmer is the, the daily challenges. Everything's, everything's different every single day and uh, with the weather as well thrown in, it's, it just makes life interesting. So this grass field is protecting Anglo-Saxon archaeology. We have a, a, a burial mound here, one we're still on at the moment, and then between the two pylons was a uh, Anglo-Saxon settlement that my grandfather excavated in the 1970s. 
So 10 years ago, we started to use satellite technology to make our everything we do more accurate. And that's had a big effect on our bottom line and also as a byproduct of the environment. GPS steers all of the tractors and it turns on and off all of the equipment that we have fixed to the tractors. So this crop sprayer, when it's folded out, every single nozzle is turned off when it reaches a field boundary or part of the field that we don't want it to spray anymore it will turn itself off using the information from these I think it's about 12, 13 satellites and that corrected signal from that we have from John Deere is accurate to within two centimeters and that's repeatable every year. Hello, my name's Nicholas Atkinson. The family was a part of what is known as the Cumbrian Migration, where uh, 10 or so families came down from the Lake District and um, to bring their cattle and fertility to the soil of what was at the time a very barren landscape along the South Downs. We have uh, 800 acres of arable land here and a further 200 um, of downland, which is um, in the HLS scheme there is undoubtedly a difference and it has started in the last few years. Um, first of all every farm that we farm has a barn owl on it which is an absolute joy for me as a farmer to see. A key species of bird would be the corn bunting. We're all desperate to try and get the corn bunting back on our farm to the volumes that it was say in the early part of the cent last century. This is our um, 17 acres of SSSI. A triple SI is a site of special scientific interest, which has been ever since um, we farmed the farm since the late 70s. Um, it has never had anything agrochemical or fertilizer put on it in that time. So it is slowly and very surely reverting back to um, traditional chalk grassland. The grassland on the farm um, we maintain on this farm with sheep. We used to be cattle as well. We have 350 sheep on the farm which graze the downland. We have to take them off at the 1st of May and then we can put them back on, on the first, in the 1st of August. And the idea of that is to let the natural flowers which used to live on the downland to regenerate and seed. Obviously our primary business here at South Farm is, is an arable enterprise producing wheat, barley and oats. We have to maintain and keep our crops disease and pest free and for that we use the sprayer. We use it as sparingly as we possibly can. I'm incredibly optimistic about the situation of farming. Um, I think it's probably a more optimistic, bearing in mind I'm coming to the end of my farming career, and that the fact that local production is just so important. Being in the South Downs Farmers Group, like-minded farmers together, um, sharing their interests, their farms, their ideas as to the way that um, we can push the environmental aspect of our livelihoods forward. Um, I think, and for the future part of the South Downs, I think it's going to become even more important as farming eventually loses its, its production-led subsidy. Hi, my name's Will Atkinson and I'm a member of the South Downs Farmers Group. I'm fifth generation farmer of this farm here. Our family came in down in 1906. The farm is a traditional mixed farm, so that means sheep, that means cattle, they're both for, for meat, but we also have arable. Wheat would be off to Warburton's, maybe for, for bread. Malting barley, hopefully, if it makes the right grade, that would go off to Europe for, for beer. And then oats, we'd be looking at sort of Quaker, and maybe in the future it might even go for oat milk, as that industry seems to be growing at the moment. So our um, lamb would end up on a shelf in Sainsbury's or Waitrose at the moment, or we now do a direct meat box sales um, called Me Inside Meats, and we actually sell direct to any customer that wants it online. Um, our cattle currently are with the Budgeons Group and Macro, um, all big brands, and the forequarter, so that's the, the front third, would end up in McDonald's. We love our animals. Um, and so we want to look after them whilst they're here on the farm. But we also want to do that whilst looking after the environment. The net zero 
that we're going to try and hit by 2040 is going to be a hugely important target that I'm really excited to try and make happen on this farm. Water voles was a, is, a, is an interesting species when it comes to trying to reintroduce. Um, everyone seems to like eating water voles, whether it's a, a bar now, a heron, or the mink. And it's been great. We've been working well with several different organizations to reintroduce these. So farm tours are a bit of a passion of father and I. We, we enjoy telling people what we do here on the farm and more and more people need to learn about where their food come from. And this starts right from sort of key stage one and two, uh, primary school kids. There's a new initiative um, that's come forward which FaceTime a farmer. So it's using basic tech um, to basically get urban schools that wouldn't necessarily be at, have access to here to be able to see exactly what we do. So they FaceTime us, we can stand here like we are today and talk about exactly what we do from the classroom. Working as a group, um, of course, that gives you a bit more weight. It adds land area, especially for the environment, for things to flourish. So key indicators, key uh, bird species that we're trying to protect they need space. They can't just have one farm that is trying to do its best. So this group really brings together a group of farms that are very located near each other and it really helps focus the mind. There's a little bit of competition going on between each farmer. I think that's good and, and that will hopefully go into the future.